And now, two days ago, the, the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, talking about Olawoli Edu, said Nigeria is economically far much better than where it was when President Bolami Tinubu assumed office, that is, uh, 29 May 2023. He says the uh, government is looking inward and focusing on domestic resource mobilization, and that the government had also brought budget deficit down. And also, Minister of Budget Atiku Abagudu said the government delivered a budget that now has capital expenditure that outweighs the recurrent expenditure with capital expenditure at about 39% of the entire budget, talking about the 28.7 trillion naira budget. And also increase uh, budgets of health, education, agriculture. These sectors, you agree with me, are the enablers of economic growth. So today, actually this morning at this time, we have joining us Dr. Samson Simon. He is a chief economist at Arc Economics and Data. He joins us from Lagos to examine some of these increases and, and the way forward, talking about expectations of the economy. Dr. Simon, you are welcome to Business Express. Thank you for having me. Good morning, Nigeria. It's been a while, doctor. How is Nigeria treating you? <laughs> Uh, everything is okay. <laughs> Great. Okay. Same here. Okay. Uh, infrastructure, agriculture, health, education, uh, these are critical sectors of uh, economic growth. And if you look at assessment uh, following NBS reports, uh, data from NBS, in the last two quarters, talking about the third quarter and uh, the fourth quarter of 2023, did not actually perform well. We had the services sector taking the, the front bench. What do you think is responsible for some of these key enablers going slow at this point? Um, services as a sector of the economy um, actually dominates um, economic activity within the country. And um, it's not going to be a surprise if um, it's actually outperforming others. And agriculture in particular, because of the issue of insecurity, that has um, not really been helping matters because the average farmer is afraid to go to his uh, farm. He might be kidnapped, he might be killed. And then others too are not helping matters because sometimes, we have many cases of such, they are grazing on farmlands of people. So all of these factors have contributed to the diminishing um, growth of the agricultural sector. Um, that's actually a huge problem that um, the government needs to do something serious and quickly too about. Okay, uh, the, the agriculture is one uh, sector we have health and others, but let's concentrate on agriculture as it were. Yes, I agree with you, some level of insecurity, which is improving now, has a kind of militated against the growth uh, and uh, it has hampered on uh, production. But, but aside insecurity, Talking about the yield, take for instance, you get to cultivate a hectare of land. How much of yield do we get? How far have we gone in bringing mechanization, in bringing technology, into cultivating and getting more from smaller pieces of land? Yes, the larger part of the land has been affected by insecurity. For that which is secured and we're able to cultivate, how much of it are we using to explore increased productivity? What should we do going forward, following the lessons we're learning? Uh, it's true. The yield in Nigeria is abysmal. Uh, even when you compare it to our African peers, it's really low. So um, the authorities need to do something about that. But um, when there's uh, insecurity, people cannot even go to their farmland. So talking about yield takes... Second, it doesn't take, uh, the yield does not take the precedence that um, the security problem has, the, the security issue uh, within the country is having. Because when you tackle insecurity, that's when people can start going to their farm. And when people start going to their farm, that's when you talk about the yield and the productivity of, uh, of a hectare or an acre of, of farmland. And that can actually be improved if um, you have mechanized farming. I know the Nigerian authorities for a while now um, have been insisting that 
uh, everybody should go to the farm. Uh, they want everybody to be a farmer, but I feel that's the wrong way of doing things. And we have been doing that. It has not been yielding the results that we, we desire. So what is actually needed is people should graduate from subsistence or subsistent farming to mechanized farming. And only a few of us can do that. We don't need... Tell me one country that has succeeded. The agricultural sector has grown and has met all the domestic demands and has so much surplus to export. Let's use uh, Ukraine, for example, that where we, where is a, one of the largest uh, exporters of uh, wheat. It's only a tiny fraction of the population that is engaged in agriculture, even in America, even in Europe. So telling all Nigerians to go back to the farm is, is the, in my view, is not a wise thing to see. What we need is to mechanize agriculture, uh, reform the land tenure system, and make sure that we have improved breeds of either crops or animals. So you need to boost agriculture, make our access to credit uh, easy. And uh, I'm by no means saying government should give grants to farmers, but they can be encouraged. Even for the herders that are going around, this, the best way of growing cattle is not by moving around. You need to have a ranch and you put them in a particular place. That's where you have the best result that you need. So we are doing many things the wrong way. And as long as we continue doing those things the wrong way, we may not have the result we are looking for. I agree with you on, on that point and also talking about increased funding which you are advocating. I want to also inform you that the Minister of Budget uh, was also at the Green Chambers and reminded us all that increased funding for these sectors uh, from the 28.7 trillion budget with capital expenditure taking 39 percent. It's uh, something that the government was so very deliberate about in tackling. And looking at this increased budget uh, allocation, what should we expect going forward? Well, a, a budget is, is only a projection. Uh, we are expecting certain amount of money to come in in revenue. We are expecting uh, to spend this, how we are going to allocate the revenue or the, the borders we tend to embark upon. So it's not actually cast in stone. And the performance of the budget is very important. But it's good that um, agriculture is taking the, the importance it, it deserves because uh, food inflation is the worst part of our inflation in Nigeria. And Nigerians are actually hungry. And um, everything must be done to ensure that um, these resources that have been allocated are efficiently uh, used. It's not about allocating 100 billion or 1 trillion or whatever money that you're trying to allocate for a particular sector of the economy. The most important thing is that you make sure that this money is being used well and the resources reach the appropriate quota. It's very important uh, for things to be done the right way. That's the only way that we're going to see results. And another thing is um, creative problem solving says you need to understand the problem before you can get the solution. So have we really understood what the problem is with the sector or are we just throwing resources at problems without even understanding what is actually needed? So all these things have to be considered. And um, it's good that this government is serious about it, but it's not just being serious by saying it. We need to see it in action. And Nigerians are actually hungry and they should do everything humanly possible to fix that particular sector of the economy. Okay, well, one key thing Nigerians have continued to lament about, particularly those in the reproductive uh, sector, uh, I'm, I'm talking about a result on the effect of the rise in cost of living, rise in foodstuffs particularly, is alluded to the high cost of production, and that is closely related to, to power supply. Yes, we're having uh, our, our Bretton Woods institutions talking about the World Bank, the IMF, and other development agencies coming into country to give support. We've made attempts to actually increase uh, what, what will I say now, power supply in Nigeria. It seems to work, it seems uh, to be slow and now the conversation is alternative energy source. We have abundant of solar to put into this. How do you think Nigerians, the small business holder, can actually um, get to benefit from this new line of thinking of government talking about adopting solar for power supply? 
Well, um, the power sector um, has not been really at the place that we say we are there yet. Um, there's a lot of work. Um, Nigeria is known for uh, epileptic uh, power supply. That's actually not something that we're proud of, but that's a fact. And the previous governments have tried. Uh, I know the famous $16 billion during the Obasan Jutenua. And the last government who spent trillion so far, nothing to show for it. And the truth is, the national grid is a tiny fraction of the power supply within the country. Because when you aggregate all the generators, the solar panels and so on, Nigeria actually is, a, is an electricity superpower. So um, we have to make the most. Since the government uh, has not succeeded in tackling the problem of power, I think individuals have to do everything. We have been doing that, but we can actually do better. And we have to explore alternative sources of power, cleaner sources of energy like solar. However, the cost of solar, more especially the initial cost, is quite exorbitant. So it's not easy, and um, this is where the authorities and even the Britain Woods institutions can come in. They can uh, subsidize some of the things because it's actually, um, this actually redounds to everybody's benefit and um, is good for, for the environment. So besides that, access to credit can also be improved for anybody that wants to embark on um, acquisition of solar energy or solar power for whatever purposes that the person needs it. So power is critical. And the business environment here is a bit harsh. If you look at the ranking in ease of doing business, and even for the fact that many people are, are leaving the country, many investors are leaving the country, I will find it difficult to invite investors into Nigeria. That tells you that the business environment here may be a bit harsh. And the authorities need to do everything humanly possible to make it quite conducive, not only for foreign investors, but for domestic investors. If all these things are done, then not only agriculture, but many sectors of the economy will begin to blossom. And that is actually necessary to be done if we actually want to see results this coming year. So the ease of doing business we might not be there yet, but you also agree with me that we have improved moving 10 places in the last two years. And we're looking forward uh, to better incentives as been promised by the government. You, you talked about access uh, to credit uh, for those who uh, will be using uh, solar as alternative energy. Uh, you also agree with me that money is not always there but what is there is being managed and government in trying to fund the 2024 a budget of 28.7 trillion has said they will look to generating revenue from in country rather than relying solely on borrowing in time past and one of the sources of revenues has been a collection of tax yes we hear from FIRS recently that the process is going to be more automated of, uh, data is going to be used to ensure that everybody is captured into the tax net but alternatively to the number one source of revenue for Nigeria has been crude oil production yes we are moving to about uh, 1.6 million barrels per day though the target is 2 million barrels per day but much is still being lost due to oil uh, theft where do you think we should go from here um oil theft has has been a major problem and it's one of the reasons why uh we have scarcity of uh, of forex in nigeria and if our the government I don't think it's, it's right for you to depend on uh, either Tompolo or, or Asadi Dokubo, all these militants, to, to protect the pipelines. I think the Nigerian military is capable of doing that. You just need to put the right people there. Uh, and so far, um, the uh, authorities uh, have, have not done that because all theft is still a major problem within the country. And I think the problem of oil theft deserves all the attention and everything, all hands must be on deck to make sure that the problem is tackled. And um, that can only be done if we make sure that capacity takes uh, precedence and we have the most capable people tackling that problem. There is a lot of um, compromise within the system, whether it's NMPC, uh, NMPC or the military or even the local communities in the Niger Delta. And all these things can be tackled if the government is serious about it.
Sure that government is serious, but we need to see more action taken. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Samson Simon, for sharing your thoughts with us at this particular point in time. Thank you. I can, I, I can see your attention is also needed there. Thank you very much.